everybody so we are at the last juncture of this particular lesson connection expression using stories this is one of the most exciting thing you know telling stories just take a moment and think when you were child when you were very young very young as in when you were 2 years old 3 years old how many stories must have you narrated to your mama or papa just think you must be remembering lots and lots of stories what all thoughts come into your mind you tell a story that is what you used to do when you were very small for that matter even now you can cook up stories right you can cook lots and lots of stories and i always tell this to children and adults too our life is a drama i think i have told this earlier also it's a drama every day certain things happen that either is very emotional very funny very sad very exciting so our life every day shows us some of these moments when you are giving a speech when you are delivering a speech you can use any of these techniques which i'll tell you to share your stories the stories could be related to you the stories could be related to someone else the stories could be related to a character which is fictitious doesn't exist stories could be about animals stories could be about things could be about places could be uh, in a setting which is maybe which maybe doesn't exist or in a setting which is in in the country that you live in in the city that you live in or the setting could be outside the world anything related to your topic your subject when you draft your speech just try to incorporate these stories storytelling is the best format or form of connecting and expressing yourself now let's look at what is in detail what is storytelling and what are the kinds of storytelling and i'll give you certain examples also okay so let's just take a deep dive this session is going to be a bit longer because i'm going to tell you about close to 6 7 story telling techniques i mean what kind of stories you can share with your audience or what kind of stories you can prepare and that is going to help you in putting across your point okay so please take out some time go and drink some water go and take a bio break if you want but i do not want you to leave this session in between uh, the session that you're watching so take a break come back and see what is it that i have in store for you when it comes to storytelling okay so shall we move on so you can take a pause if you want pause my uh, video go and take some break and come back because it's going to be more than half an hour of storytelling session all right so fasten your seat belts and here we go so i'm going to tell you stories i'm going to tell you lots of stories real life fictitious at times and i'm going to put across my thoughts i'm going to tell you what is important what is not important the kind of storytelling techniques we have i'll share with examples exciting right now now how does storytelling help what is a story story is narration of certain events about as i told you people place thing animal or some fictitious characters it could be anything imaginary also it could be just a drop of waterfall it could be it could be a dust it could be something that doesn't exist it could be on superhumans it could be on normal human beings it could be on animals it could be on a dog it could be on a cat it could be on a tiger it could be on a lion it could be on elephant or it could be on places you can write stories you can put across your point telling stories about places why does this why do we say rome was built in rome was not built in one day significance of rome significance of india significance of the city that you are from so stories around the places stories around the things around humans stories around characteristics characters stories around planets stories stories around uh, things like uh, vehicles i don't know how many of you all watch cartoons but there are several cartoon characters i have to watch because my daughter keeps watching so there is a series that comes called tayo okay the bus's name is tayo and all his friends are either buses cars and then they've got this beautiful pink cars who tayo wants to be friends with then you've got these peppa pigs okay animals and peppa's friends are all animals and all their names starts with 
the name of the the sound of the animal's name so like let's say it's a horse so she, the friend the horse's name would be starting with h like peppa is a pig so her name is st starts with p which is the first alphabet of the animal's name then she has a uh, sheep as a friend his her name starts with suzy s so you can build in stories around everything around you everything your creativity comes up when you can put across your thoughts and build a story and the story is to put across your points the story is to enable your audience to take actions the story is to demonstrate something the story is to share an idea the story is to build a concept so you you are using stories because you want to make your audience learn something take an action or understand a concept or idea okay so that is why you use stories now how do stories affect your audience stories build chemical and this is through a study this is not that i am saying there have been several researchers and studies around how storytelling or how the art of stories incorporation of stories in your speech helps you and your audience story is built chemical physical and emotional responses okay there is some chemical reaction you you must be knowing by now and since we are talking about mindset your brain has lot of chemicals flowing inside okay so those chemicals help you do some reaction when you listen to stories and those reactions build emotional responses you get physical uh, the moment you hear uh, an emotional story you either have tears in your eyes or you have goose bumps when you hear a story which is very exciting which is very motivating you you feel the urge to do something right away okay so that's a physical reaction then you've got chemical reaction inside your body whole body and then because of that chemical reaction you you have that emotional response so stories build these things okay they build chemical physical and emotional responses in your listeners that is your audience that is why stories are very important when stories make people feel things like trust or kindness the brain releases oxytocin so i told you this is not written by me so these are chemical reactions so there is a uh, there is a thing called oxytocin which gets released when you listen to stories okay which motivates cooperation by enhancing empathy your stories will enhance empathy in your audience there is a difference between sympathy and empathy sympathy is just showing concern but empathy is we call it that getting into someone else's shoe so you can only understand that person's perspective or standpoint or problem when you stand where the person is and then see what are the problems he or she is facing so empathy is really feeling for that person because you have also maybe gone through that situation or you understand the pain associated or the spurts or the outbursts associated with the situation this means that through stories people become more likely more likely to adopt new ideas as i told you earlier and act based on those ideas so let's go back to our emotional uh, connect that we tried to build with our audience when we spoke about differently abled or special uh, specially abled or special children so if you want your audience to act around the idea so let's say you're trying to create a conducive environment you're trying to create a a group of people who would do anything for these specially abled or differently abled children when you tell stories of these kind of children the struggles that they face the smile that they have on their uh, in their uh, face or the sparkle in their eyes when you share these kind of stories your audience connects with you and then they can act based on these ideas now here and i'll take a pause and i'll i'll say something about this action my father was going through a lot of anxiety last year he was not well he got cured there was a lot of things that went around in our family my uh, dad was almost at the verge of you know we were just, we were just holding tip of his fingers he was almost about to leave us and go and then magic happened there was a doctor who understood 
what the problem was and in 21 days after 21 days stay of icu he came out after he came out from the icu we we saw that he was not very excited about life he felt scared he didn't allow me to go to office he used to feel that every should everyone should be at home nobody should venture out of the home the moment somebody goes out of the home i mean the family members that we have something will happen to us so he was always anxious so the 21 days that he spent in the icu and the kind of medicines and then there was a lot of water that was taken out from his body had kind of uh, so had some effect in his mind and he had become very anxious it was that point in time when this doctor counseled my dad he is a cardiologist however he started to counsel my dad just like a psychiatrist does psychiatrist's role is to counsel you to see if you are uh, anxious or to see if you are depressed and to see if you are you are facing any mental challenges and mental illness but this doctor who is a psychiatrist did this for my dad he used to whenever and thankfully and by god's grace we all we live in the same society he is just the other uh, he lives just in the other block he used to talk to my papa and he used to make him feel that life is worth living for and while he was telling this while he was uh, talking to my dad it, it's it's all about last year's story that i'm talking to you july august september was the time frame quite similar to what we are in the situation now in the same time frame and he used to say he used to call him uncle patient and doctor and the kind of relationship he had built around his patient he said uncle life is so exciting right you've got your granddaughter you've got your daughter here you've got your brother uh, son in law you've got your entire family with you what makes you so sad they are all safe they are all happy do not worry and then he kept on counseling him counseling him and counseling him and by october we saw a massive change in my father's mental um capability of accepting things and by december jan he was by god's grace he still is fine okay so he always thanks this doctor now why am i telling this act i'm here this is what i'm talking about just last week on monday and while he was doing this while he was counseling my dad we came very closer to the family and we realized and we understood that his mother and the reason why he understood the situation was because his mother was also a patient a very very um, at the verge of kind of committing something she was under clinical depression clinical depression is a is a is a condition wherein you do not have control in your mind you are not born like that i mean you will take some wrong decisions and she had tried to ta- take her own life away four times okay and he used to talk about his mother that i understand because my mother had tried to end her life in in several occasions the last in the past two or three years so i understand your pro- problem well just last monday i was at home working from home i received a message in our society group that a lady has committed suicide she has jumped off from the building i just prayed for that departed soul and then when i looked at the message i looked at the flat number and i froze i froze because it was the doctor's mother all right so just imagine the situation this person has made my dad come out of that almost reaching depression stage and now when i went to meet him uh, they were just sitting at the site of the um, accident and incidents rather he couldn't speak because uh, we could connect the moment i looked at him and i felt that i told his dad i mean his father that uncle auntie has gone to to a better place but i can never forget whatever uh, doctor has done for me it was then that we now come into this that me and some of the society members decided that elderly people need lot of care need compassion need people to talk to and now we are at the we are at the stage wherein we are trying to form a group in the society itself a group for the elderly people wherein they'll come and connect with us we will talk to them we will tell stories we will listen to whatever they have to say so when you have these when you share these kind of stories and when you expect so when when we realize that we need to take care of people we need to take care of elderly people 
Now, if I want to make other people join this initiative of mine, I can tell this story, and which is a real story. There is nothing fictitious in this. That is how you connect. That is how you make your audience take an action. Okay? I know it's a very emotional story, but that's how life is. So, if you want your audience to take action, stories will help you. Emotional or motivational or funny, whatever the story is, it will help you make your audience take an action. Now, there are several kinds of techniques of storytelling or writing your story. Telling is when you narrate the story, but before that you write the story or think through. The first is monomyth. This kind of storytelling technique is, is what, we, what we see in our holy books or in mythological stories. Let's say if you have heard the story of Rama, the, uh, the story of Lord Rama, he had to leave his house and he had to struggle a lot for so many years, 14 years of um, vanvas that we call, okay? He was um, in isolation with his wife and with his brother and the kind of struggles he had to go through. Similarly, there are stories, mythological stories about Mahatma Buddha. Then you've got stories about uh, King Ashoka. So these are all stories that you find in mythological books or in uh, history books. Okay, So it's about, about a hero, about someone who had to go through lots of struggles in his life. Now, if you want to put across a point to your audience about awakening the society at large, that's what Gautam Buddha did. So you can start with Gautam Buddha's story. He's a hero. He had lots and lots of struggles in his life. He gave up on all his things, all his possessions in life and he marched ahead. And he changed so many people. He, he affected so many lives, millions, billions and billions of life. Okay? So monolith, monomyth, sorry, is a kind of a story that is built around a hero, around someone, the main character. It could, it could also be an animal. So when I'm saying character, it could be anyone. I just give you an example of mythological and historical characters. It could be anyone. That is found in many folk tales, as I told you, folk tales myths and religious writing from around the world. So you can use any of these stories. So these are not written by you. These are not your life story. These are already written. You can pick and choose these stories in your speech to put across certain points. How many of you all have watched? I'm not sure of, but if you get time, do watch the movie called Lion King. And his name was? Simba. So Simba, when he was small, he lost his father. And he was so scared, so scared, that he, uh, he evaded the situation of facing his uncle's uh, scar. He thought that running away, he didn't realize that his mother is also there. He thought of escaping from the struggles. And he went and met his friends. And he grew up there. It was only when he grew up, and he realized that this is not, a, not where I belong to. I belong to the jungle. And my dad was a hero. He was the king of the jungle. I also need to follow his footprints, his footsteps, and become what he was. And then he fought his uncle Scar, and he became the Lion King. All right. So you can tell about Lion King story in, in any context. If you want your audience to be motivated, you can speak of Lion King. If you want your audience to feel that even small children, uh, when they feel that they are not protected or they, they want to run away, tell the story to them. So it's a monomyth wherein the, the central character of the story goes through a lot of struggles, but rises up in his life and achieves something. So story has a very good ending. In a monomyth, the hero is called to leave their home and set out on a difficult journey. Okay, so either he is leaving on his own or he is running away, but leading a very difficult journey. They move from somewhere they know into a threatening unknown place or to a place which they are not accustomed to live in. However, they come out as a winner. You can use this type of stories if you want to motivate your audience. This is good for taking the audience on a journey. So when you, when you tell Simba's story, you are taking them on a journey from when Simba was a small baby, when he was small, to when he became the Lion King. So you are taking people 
on to the journey of Simba and telling that with perseverance, with determination, you too can become what you are meant to be. Okay? Showing the benefit of taking risks. When you want to make people believe that if you take risks, you will be successful. Demonstrating how you learned some newfound wisdom. So you can say that Lion King, the story of Simba, inspire, has inspired me to such an extent that from, from um, a very shy person, from a very um, lazy person, from a very from a person who is very coward, I have become a very strong person. I have developed leadership qualities. So you can tell this. I have found a new new wisdom. So it was all about mono myth. Now we come to a story technique called mountain. And as the name suggests, it's like this. Okay. The mountain structure is a way of mapping the tension and drama in a story. Tension and drama. It's similar to the mono myth. Because it's about someone's journey, someone's story, wherein he or she is struggling. Because it helps to build a plot when certain events occur, just like we saw in Monomyth. It's different because it doesn't necessarily have a happy ending. So in Monomyth, it's always a happy ending because you want your... It's about motivational story. A story that doesn't have a happy ending will not motivate people, but will make them realize certain things okay so mountain kind of a storytelling or story writing technique doesn't have a happy ending that is how it's not what kind of similar to monomyth the first part of the story is given to setting the scene you set the scene and is followed by just a series of small small events or challenges and rising action before a climatic conclusion it could be it could have a happy ending or it could end in a bad note or it could not be that happy, not as per your expectation. However, these stories also can tell you that, and we'll see it here, how will it, what are the, um, how is it good for? Showing how you overcame a series of challenges. If you are sharing your story, slowly building tension, if you want to build that tension, curiosity among your audience. And if you want to deliver a satisfying conclusion by saying that, let's take, example of a uh, mountain story okay i'm not sure of how many of you all uh, have watched this movie but again go and watch this movie and these are all kids movies so you should go and watch the movie's name is moana okay the movie's name is moana now moana is a girl who who is the daughter of the chief of a village and they are mm, they only they are, they live around in an island around an ocean and this girl wants to venture in the water. She wants to go and see how ocean looks, what challenges ocean throws. But her, fam her father doesn't want her to go. Her father doesn't want her, her father just wants her to become the chief once he dies or once he uh, dethrones from his position. He wants his daughter to become the chief. But he doesn't want his daughter to venture out into the ocean. And this girl has something inside her and she wants to venture out in the ocean. And she gets a a small green color object which just looks like a pendant and when she was small she gets it and she didn't know what is what is that pendant all about but her grandmother always wanted her to pursue her dreams her grandmother was always with her she used to tell her that why do you think that you always go to the ocean why does ocean call you it's because there is a connection you are not meant to just be the chief you are meant to do bigger things Okay, that is what her grandmother used to tell. And when her grandmother died, she realized she gave that green pendant to her. She said that when you were very small, you had got it, but you threw it. I had kept it only for this day. So after her death, this girl took that heart and she realized that it's the heart of Tefiti, of a mountain, which has now become a, uh, that mountain is not there anymore. And she has to go and give the uh, heart to the mountain, heart back to the mountain. And then she ventures into the journey and she meets a person called Maui. Okay, now this, this Maui can only help her. And in the struggle that's, that this girl goes through, they're almost at the uh, juncture of reaching Tafiti. And she has reached Tafiti and then she sees that Tafiti doesn't exist anymore. The mountain doesn't exist anymore. And Maui, due to some reason, leaves her and goes away because there's a tussle between them. You go and watch this movie. It's a very interesting movie. You are slowly building tension. 
at times they are nearing Tafiti and then when they uh, almost reach Tafiti, Tafiti is not there and then they meet a, a lava, a, a villain in the movie, okay, her name is Tekka and this Tekka wants to come uh, in between Moana and that uh, Tafiti. But then Moana realizes and it, there's a lot of um, suspense in this movie. So when you tell these kind of movies, you slowly build tension. That movie has a happy ending though. It's a very, very happy ending and there's a message in that movie that do not play around with nature, let nature be, do not cut trees. So it's actually that theme that they have and also that if you are meant to be something, you will achieve that. So that's the mountain kind of a story wherein you bring your uh, audience up and then bring them down and again take them up, bring them down and create curiosity and deliver ultimately a satisfying conclusion. Now moving on, the third type is nested loops okay nested loops is something like this okay here is your main idea now this is the main idea that you want to put across and there are layers so these are just layers you peel one layer at a time one layer at a time and try to talk about your main idea all right. So nested loop is a storytelling technique where you where you layer three or more narratives, which are stories, within each other. You place your most important story, the core of your message, in the center, okay, and use the rest of the other stories to elaborate or explain that central principle. And this is what I did when I talked to you about helping elderly people share their thoughts, talking to them. These people need our love and care. And when I told, th th that was the central message. Around that, I told about my story. And that was the main story. And around that, I revolved another story of the doctor's mother. And then I talked about the current situation of what we are doing. Okay. So that is what nested loop is. Layer by layer, you keep telling stories. And ultimately, the aim is to make your audience believe in some concept, ideas, or take some action. So the, this technique is good for explaining the process of how you were inspired or came to a conclusion. So how was I inspired or inspired as in how, how should I help the elderly people? Because I know I can connect with this problem of depression and anxiety. So when two events happened in my life and these were the narratives that I gave, then I realized that I need to take an action. I need to take care of these people. I need to be with elderly people. So that was my main core idea and I came to a conclusion that this is what I'm supposed to do and when I'm going to tell this to my audience to the society people who are my audience they will also join my journey using analogies to explain a central concept analogies means you are comparing two things um, which are the two different things actually so life is not a bed of roses okay or uh, life is a thorny journey so when you say when you give analogy you are comparing one thing with another thing which are not similar that is what analogy is so you are you can use these stories to explain a central concept okay so you can say like if I, if my central theme is spending time with elderly people and hearing them out because they do not get that connection with their own family members you can use an analogy that when you grow old you become another baby, okay? Now, elderly people and babies are not same. But when you become old, you are just like another newborn baby. The care and love and affection that a newborn baby needs, similar care, love and affection, compassion, elderly people, your grandparents need. So spend time with them, okay? So you can use analogies. Showing how a piece of wisdom was passed along you. If you want to show that, Honesty is the best policy, let's say, is the wisdom. It's passed on to you. You can build these nested stories. So you can talk about your story, that how did you realize that honesty is the best policy, or story and, and story about your friend who has built this wisdom, and where did both of you get this wisdom from? Okay, so you can create such stories, nested pool. Then the fourth kind is spark lines, and it's very simple. If you have a whiteboard or a paper chart to show, you can show that or you can just draw it with your hands, with your actions and show. So it's, it's about 
way of mapping presentation structures or your speech structures. The very best speeches succeed because they contrast our ordinary world with an ideal improved world. They compare what is with what could be. So when you're comparing two things, uh, and I had told this in our previous discussions also that comparison and contrast is what you use. So when you're using comparison, and then when we, you can use your hands to show, you can use your expressions to show if you do not have a chart paper or a slide to show, okay? But then you draw. Life, this is what life is. It goes smoothly and then there is a spike. You come across a lot of challenges here. But when you meet the challenges, it goes smooth again. Or you can say that this is life. There is a good spike and then there is a fall. And that is how life is. So when you draw these things with a story, then your audience can see it. Okay, so this is what she has drawn. This is where Simba is today. Can he reach this level? So you are using these spark lines. Okay. The very best speeches succeed when you use these spark lines because you are, you are comparing two different two situations. What is it good for? Inspiring the audience to take an action, of course. Creating hope and excitement. Creating a following. They will kind of start uh, taking actions and start following your ideas. The next kind of story is converging ideas. So, converging means when two things come, converge, okay, come like this. Converging ideas is a speech structure that shows the audience how different strands, okay, of thinking came together to form one product or idea. Different form of thinking different strands of thinking came together to form one product or idea. Now I'll give you a, a story of a mason who obviously was uneducated, could hardly meet his, um, make his ends meet, could hardly earn a, earn a bread for himself. And he was, he had once gone to a building to to be a part of this construction team, but he is just a mason, a very small mason. And while he was constructing one of the walls, he saw that there was a, there were a lot of, and it's a, it was a huge building. It was some 20 floors building. And it, this story is way old, okay, in, in the year, you can say in the, in the 19th century. He saw that there were stairs built around. A 19th century, as in, this story is before the invention of lifts, okay? Early 20th century, rather. So, he, while he was building a wall, he saw a few engineers who were standing there and, and were discussing that how should we make people not climb the stairs and come to this building. Then they started discussing, and then this man said, since he is uneducated, he doesn't have the, uh, the knowledge, but the knowledge to implement. But he came up with an idea. He said that can there be something wherein through your technology, can we build something that will help people? There will be something that will be, you know, kind of a pulley and maybe a rope that when we pull the way we use bucket and um, rope to pull water from a well, there will be something that will pull them up. And he's uneducated. He has no degree on uh, engineering. The moment he said that, there were other engineers who literally sprang from their chair and, this, and then they said, what an idea. What an idea have you come up with? That is how lift was invented. Okay. So, converging ideas. Two people. I mean, he was talking about um, bucket and rope. That was a different idea. But using that different idea, the engineer came up with building a lift. Likewise, I am sure all of you all know Google, right? You've heard of this company called Google. It's one of the giants in IT. Now, Google had two founders, Larry Page and his, found, uh, his partner. These two had different ideologies, different beliefs, different faith, yet they came up 
and built a giant called Google. So when you use these kind of stories, that is what converging ideas is. When people with different thoughts come together and do something good for the society or do something good for the community as a whole. In these corona times, we call, why do we call them corona warriors? These are all different people from different fields, the doctors, the, the nursing staff, then you've got police that we used to you know, bang the uh, utensils for and ring the bells for. These were di people from different, com uh, different workspace, different levels, but all these together try to help us during those testing times. So converging ideas is about people from different background, different thoughts, ideas and belief come together and do something good. And you can use these kind of stories to show how great minds came together, like Google's founder, Microsoft, how did they build Microsoft, how did they build Amazon. So when you have to motivate people and make them take an action to take up entrepreneurship maybe as a course, this is how you build the stories together. Demonstrating how a development occurred at a certain point in history. Okay, so uh, not in not very back in history, but how was lift invented is how I uh, this the story that I shared, showing how symbiotic relationships have formed. So you've got relationships between different communities of people coming together and helping the society at a large. So when you have to given these kind of ideas, this converging idea techniques of storytelling helps. And this is a very exciting uh, storytelling technique. Okay, This storytelling technique is wherein you start like this. There was an old man. He was very devastated with life. One day, out of desperation, he took his cane that he used to walk with and started walking on the street. He stood in the middle of the street and waited for the bus to hit him. There was one bus that was coming at a speed and then you stop. So you started with a false start. Now what will your audience feel? That the bus has come and hit him. But then you restart the story again. Okay? Unexpectedly disrupting and beginning it over again. Okay? Now the same story you will say, but then you will say, there was a, a bus that came at a very fast speed and the driver on seeing the old man pressed the brake very, uh, in a, the, pressed the brake and squeezed with a squeak and there was just one inch difference between the old man and the bus. So you started with a false story so that your audience will feel, okay, something will happen to the old man, but you go back to the story and reframe the story with a positive ending. Okay, false start story is when you begin to tell a seemingly predictable story. So it's predictable. The old man is standing on the middle of the street, he'll get hit. Before unexpectedly disrupt, uh, disrupting it and beginning it all over again, you lure your audience, means you uh, kind of attract your audience into a false sense of security at times or a false sense of disbelief and then shock them by turning the tables. Okay, could be turning the tables for good or bad. This format is great for talking about a time that you failed in something and were forced to go back to start and reassess. So you can also tell a story of your own experience that you studied really, really hard and it had happened to me. I, had a, I was appearing for an interview and this is way back in 2006 for an insurance company and I was looking forward to this job. I did whatever I could. I studied day in and day out. In the, uh, in the uh, group discussions, I answered very well and the, the recruiter, he was so impressed with me that he said that, he said that I'll interview you at the end and it was an overnight interview. I was interviewed at around 3.30 to 4 a.m. And, and then they said that you, if you guys want to just go for a break, you can go for a break and then at 5 o'clock we will declare the results. My placement officer was just standing next to me and he was saying that, Chunku, congratulations because your interview was really nice. When they started declaring the names, the 10th person's name was declared and we were 20 and then they said, this is the total number of students we are going to take. And in that list, my name was not there. Okay, so and it's a true story. I, I went and asked them that I did so well in the group discussions, I did so well in the interview, why didn't you take me? And he still tells me, I'm still connected with him. 
he says that he said at that point in time and my placement officer was also very tensed because he he knew that i will crack it he said that this girl has aspirations she will not stick to us which is why we didn't recruit her and he knew that just the very next day there was another big insurance company that was going to come in come in the uh, we were going to go to a different place and appear for the interview so he said that she will take that job up she will not come to us so why should i waste a seat okay so that kind of and it's a true story and if i tell this story to motivate children to work really hard and achieve their goals then this story of uh, a false start can help and i had to rework again literally rework again and i got placed in the the other big giant uh, insurance company as a management trainee now this is good for disrupting audience expectations showing the benefits of a flexible approach when you change your approach keeping the audience engaged okay so i'm so sorry ha huh. so this was these were the total number of techniques okay so six techniques of storytelling wherein you make your audience believe in a concept you make your audience believe in in an idea you make your audience you know jump off their chair or you make your audience feel very emotional or you make your audience feel very special or you make your audience feel very happy and excited whatever is your objective your stories can build can be built around those objectives and your stories can help your audience take those actions that you want them to take so the task for you would be take time think about stories that you know think about stories of human being i mean people of place things whatever i have told you earlier and try to tell that story to your friends to your family to your parents to your siblings and then see the reactions that you get from these people but before that if you can write the story well and good or if you can just think through and tell the story well and good try these exercises and try this on a daily basis you will see you will grow up to become a storyteller and all good speakers are good storytellers they tell their stories and they win their audiences attention they win their audiences appreciation so by doing all of these things so just let's just do a recap and see the intent is to connect and express ourselves to our audience we need to have a very good opening we need to have a very good closing we need to be clear in whatever we say we need to be emphasizing on important words we need to take right pauses we need to have right pitch we need to have right diction and all of these things if we incorporate in our stories we become awesome speakers so i'm sure now you will use all these techniques all these points that we have discussed build a story and tell your story to your audience once you've done that you can let us know in whichever mean possible that yes i have done it all right so now this now that we have learned so much about stories it's time for you to build your stories come back to us and tell us your stories thanks for watching i'll see you on the other side